Think about it from this perspective. Biblical days, the parents picked the spouse. So if you go back to biblical days, uh, but we live in a Western culture. And so, uh, you know, if I were to go up to any of my daughters and say, here's the man you're going to marry, they'd be plotting with guns to get rid of me so that they wouldn't have to marry that person. But 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 even our missionaries in India, uh, good friends of mine, they didn't choose their spouses. The parents did the children. And their marriages get along fine. Uh, just depends on the culture that you come out of. Now, that wouldn't work in our westernized culture. But, but for our young people who date, you have to be careful because the people you choose to date are the people that eventually one day you're going to marry. You know, the Bible says to not be unequally yoked. Well, that really includes even dating. Now, what I hear a lot of times is a young lady will say, well, I, I dated a guy in church, and he was worse than the, the folk who won't save. He, he, I mean, he could <coughs> keep his hand on me every time we went somewhere. He was trying. Well, then when that happens, you know that even though he's in the church, he's really not in the church. Leave him alone. But don't write off the possibility of God having a young man who loves him. One of the problems is, even in the church now, the mentality of the culture has seeped into the church. If a young man stands up and he's 24, 25 years old, and he says, you know, one of the things I just rejoice in the Lord for is that I've never slept with a woman. What happens in the church? What do we bud? So he's gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a woman. Well, 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 well. All of us was. Well, so you see how much culture influences us? Well, if a young lady stands up and says, you know, I praise God that I'm 26, 27 years old and I'm still saving myself. For my marriage. Every young man's antenna goes up in the church and he says, oh, really? <laughs> <I'll do that. laughs> We do. Say what you want to say. We laugh at But that's where we are. The only way to overcome those things is to make a habit of doing what God words say we ought to do regardless of how folk around us feel because if we go on the theology of the culture then we'll deceive ourselves into believing everybody is doing what appears to be the popular thing in culture and that's not true it is a deceptive lie of Satan we can't have young ladies who are virtuous in this day. We can't have young men who are virtuous in this day. You can't turn around and say, in Christ I can do all things. However, I always ask the question when I'm talking with people, um, couples who are thinking about getting married and things of that nature. Have you ever gone to the hospital to visit anybody who was there because they didn't have sex. I've never. In all of my visitations, nobody has ever. <laughs> I've never had to go to the hospital. And they were there because they couldn't have sex. Right. And yet, people will try to convince us that we can train killer whales, tame lions, make 30-ton elephants do the stuff we train them to do. We can teach dogs and cats how to use the bathroom outside of the house or particular places to go in the house. But we can't discipline ourselves to honor the Lord with our bodies. And we've gotten to the point where it's a joke. And so when the world looks at us, the world looks at all of that and says, there really isn't anything 
to this Jesus. Our young people grow up and they, they conclude that church is church, life is life, and the two shall never come together. That's wrong. We've got to learn how to encourage our people to understand that they are precious in the sight of God. And while the world may not think they are worth it, God thinks they are worth it. And because God thinks they are worth it, nobody's opinion should supersede his. And, and, and so we have to do a better job of sharing with people their need. And, 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 and for all of us here, if that's not your situation, including the present speaker, it does not take away your right or ability to share with other folk the consequences of getting called up. Part of our problem is we try to forget our experiences rather than allow our experiences to help other people to not have to do all we did. For every marriage that ended up like mine, there are thousands of children, hundreds of thousands of children who grow up in a situation where they don't know the daddy. They got 10 children and 10 different daddies and ain't none of them heaven. All kinds of things, all because people didn't stop to say, hey, look, it was the decision I made. Yeah, I made it, but it was the wrong decision. You don't have to make that decision because every situation may not turn out the way mine did. And we have to be willing to do that rather than suppressing. It doesn't make you lesser of a person because you gave in to darkness. I wish somebody had gotten hold of me as a high school student. See, but I was taught the opposite. The, the world's theology was my oyster. Little Rick, pretty boy Rick. What did I do? I used all of that so that I could have destroyed a whole lot of lives, probably more than I did. Thank God that God in his grace and mercy didn't say, because you were a no-count rascal back then, I can never use you in the kingdom. God can take your witness, your testimonies of where he's brought you from and use you in greater ways than you ever thought. It is in your weaknesses that God's strength is revealed. It's not in your trying to walk up right and, and, and show this strength that you got. It's okay to acknowledge and, and, and so when you acknowledge your weaknesses, there are some places I'm not going. Um, how many single people do I have? Two, two single I, I would just say to them, in your dating, don't be scared to date, date. But put limits on where you will go. Because I got to tell you, once the train starts heading down the track, you can have your mind set all you want. I ain't. I'm, no. It, 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 Katie bought a door. It's done. You can have Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit. Your body is going to give in to that moment. So don't put yourself in those situations. What do I look like talking about I love Lynette? But I'm in a room filled with naked women. Because what's going to happen if I walk into a room with naked women? In it? What, what do you think going to happen? I ain't going to walk out unscathed. Because I love women. So what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? That, that's true of all of us. So, 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 so why put yourself in that situation and then get on your knees talking about, Lord, please, please help me, Lord. Lord. No, the help from the Lord was don't go. But ain't no need going. Or shooting your arm with drugs and then praying, Lord, please, don't let these drugs do to me. What, what are the drugs designed to do? Get your hat. 
So you can't take the drugs and then pray. I know you all didn't maybe intend for me to be as raw as I am, but it is where we are. And and I think that we sugarcoat too much in the church. And folk in the church getting their information from folk in darkness. And they get down to the nitty gritty. And we ain't here talking about the birds and the bees and the no, no. It is what it is. And guys gonna be guys until the Lord calls us out. And young ladies are gonna be young ladies. And, and so we have to know where our limits are and say, I'll go no further. And if a guy says, you know, well, I, I, I'm going to get with somebody else because I can't handle you. Thank God that you were not one of his notches on his belt so that he could tell. If you're talking to my oldest daughter, she'll tell you what I used to tell all her, her and her little friends. If you all don't want to have y'all's names discussed in the cafeteria because ain't nothing more embarrassing than being in line in the cafeteria and all the boys pointing at you. Saying, yeah, he said he, he got her, he had her. I say because once somebody tell it, the rest of the guys he tell it to gonna come. And the minute you say no, you know what they're gonna say? Well, how come you? And then you're gonna be embarrassed because your business gonna be out. But if you do it, the guy gonna, he gonna go out first thing gonna do is tell it. School system, I had the same responsibilities with 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 young teachers uh, dealing with high school students. And I would tell the males, you got to be careful what you say. You can't have double meanings. You have to say what it is you're saying. And make sure that, that a young lady, I don't care what she looks like, because she's still a kid. If you get involved, just say you're going to lose your job. Because she's going to tell somebody. And when she tells somebody, they're going to tell somebody. And everybody's going to be saying, I don't say, I said it. But before you know it, somebody in the administration going to know. And if we find out, you're wrong. You got to go. And you may end up in jail. So, so you know, when you look around and you see all of these things, you got to understand the depth of the forces that you're fighting. Because everything around you is saying it's okay. And the Lord is saying, you're going to be hurt by this. And, and so we have to learn how. But we have to do it in a loving way, not with condemnation. Because a lot of people get caught up in it and they're too ashamed. And they're afraid you're going to talk about them like a dog and all of that. That's not love. Real love expresses concern and tries to help a person through. And so we've got to be at that point where we're willing to to be more encouraging, more inspiring with our young people and older people who struggle in these areas.